Hello everyone. Do you know the expression, everyone is crazy in their own way? It's hard to argue with it, because everyone is free to have hobbies, even weird ones, as long as they don't interfere with other people's freedom. Some secretly transform into their alter ego, others live a humble life, and others turn their homes into sets for animated movies. Today, we'll tell you about people whose lifestyle is far from normal. However, they seem to be more than happy. Let's get it on. Tom Peters. <coughs> this 32-year-old guy works as a theatre technician, but his passion is not limited by his workplace. Tom has an unusual alter ego named Spot, and he's a big Dalmatian dog. To transform into an animal, Tom even made himself a special costume, which literally becomes his second skin. Three. Happy? Yep. In addition, he sleeps in a spacious dog kennel, walks around the house on all fours, carries dog toys, and eats dog treats from a bowl. According to Tom, this hobby helps him escape from everyday problems like any other normal hobby. He doesn't understand why adults aren't allowed to have fun if they all like to dress up in animals and mythical characters as children. Not surprisingly, many people don't understand his unusual hobby, but Tom claims that his transformations are meant to make people happy, not uncomfortable. Some people on the contrary defend the guy, saying there's nothing wrong about his passion. After all, if people around the world are crazy about cosplaying their favourite characters, why can't it just be an animal? Elizabeth Sweetheart the color green is generally considered to represent growth, development, and harmony. It brings pleasing associations in our minds and helps us to calm down. It's also associated with safety. Take the traffic lights, for example, that use this color to indicate when it's safe to cross the road. Well, seems that this nice woman from Brooklyn couldn't be more calm and in more harmony. She lives just like Edith Piaf, but on green instead of on rose. According to Elizabeth, it all started about 20 years ago, when her father took her to Florida for the first time. As an artist, she was so inspired by the local landscape and the trip itself that she began to add more and more green shades to her life. But it's not only her look. In addition to green hair, green nails, and a completely green wardrobe, Elizabeth has turned her own house into a bright green refuge. Look at this. Every day detail of her home is carefully selected. It looks like a botanical garden in bloom. People in New York call Elizabeth the Green Lady and always ask her for selfies. And she never refuses because her main goal is to bring the positive energy not only to her own life but to the lives of others. Mick Dodge have you ever heard of downshifting? Recently, it's been gaining popularity all around the world. People who are tired of the frantic rhythm of big cities and the invasion of smartphones are called downshifters. As a rule, they travel somewhere far away from cities, to the countryside or some secluded place to start a new life. Their idea is to abandon the usual advantages of modern civilization and values, be it financial well-being, career advancements, or access to technology. Wake up in the morning, have breakfast. Mick Dodge lived like this before it was even mainstream. He is 67 years old now, and he spent 30 of them in a rainforest in the Olympic Peninsula in Washington. Mick practices sports, makes soups from roots, brushes his teeth with a pine cone, and walks around barefoot. That's why people started calling him Barefoot Sensei. According to Mick, this helped him to get rid of his chronic diseases. Our feet have as many as 200,000 nerve endings, he says. That's why walking barefoot in the woods makes him feel a lot closer to nature. Of course, the man has not completely isolated himself from society. Sometimes he communicates with the residents of the nearby villages, for example, to sell what he discovered in the forest and buy himself some food. For example, Mick offers the locals jam from fresh forest berries. Doesn't that feel good? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Try it. Actually, Mick is kind of a professional chef now. He can make a soup from wild mushrooms, roots, and ordinary river stones. Thanks to the stones, the soup is saturated with important minerals. Mick also knows how to bake bread. He uses techniques used in America during the Civil War. Whoa! Yes, yeah, done. Mauro Mirandi. 
Here's another amazing back to nature story. Back in 1989, when the Italian Mauro Morandi was 50 years old, he decided to leave everything and go to Polynesia to find an island to live in solitude. Unfortunately, or fortunately, his journey was over before it even started. His boat engine broke down, and the adventurer had to dock near the desert island of Budeli near Sardinia. This is how Mauro learned that the island keeper was going to retire in the next few days and took it as a sign from the universe. This Italian Robinson Crusoe decided to take up this job and has remained there to this day. Despite the fact that his life is isolated from civilization, he still set up some amenities. For example, he installed solar panels to generate electricity. Of course, in a sense, Mauro still depends on the life of the surrounding villages. Every few days, he goes to the mainland to buy food, which he then stores in a refrigerator he bought recently. One day, Mauro couldn't get off the island for 10 days because of a severe storm. At that moment, he said he had almost accepted his destiny to starve to death. But fortunately, it all worked out in the end. Mauro claims that he had never had a cold in his 30 years on the island, thanks to the miraculous power of nature. Also, at some point, he decided that it was selfish to enjoy the beauty of the island by himself. So, the 80-year-old Robinson decided to take advantage of the island's tourist Wi-Fi hotspot. Mauro set up accounts on social media and now posts pictures of his land and communicates with his followers. Life Haugen just look at these incredible landscapes and imagine what it's like to wake up on a mountain at the first light of day and sip your morning coffee while enjoying this sunrise. Life has been living like this for 26 years, only in the summer though. He works as a fire lookout for the US Forest Service and thanks to his profession, he's been able to reconnect with nature for more than two decades. Normally, during the day, life is responsible for the transmission of weather data via radio and the monitoring of the surroundings near Montana and the Canadian border. He's witnessed major fires on several occasions. For example, in 2003, local forests were struck by lightning. The fire then covered more than 200 square kilometers. But life is fearless. Even during fires, he sees the beauty of nature. Warwick Mitchell Everyone who's ever watched Lord of the Rings must have noticed the breathtaking views. Director Peter Jackson found these landscapes in New Zealand's Fiordland National Park. It can only be reached by boat or private jet, as the nearest road is a four-day walk away. Warwick Mitchell sacrificed his life in the city and the benefits of modern civilization to see the beauty of nature here every day. Together with several other enthusiasts, he lives in the park with minimal amenities, rainwater, solar energy, and a refrigerator. The locals fill the refrigerator with fresh fish and seafood caught right on the coast, although as a rule, such products do not last long there. Billy Bar Gothic, Colorado is one of the coldest places in the United States. It's also called a ghost town because since the 1920s, when the last silver reserves ran out, no one has lived there except for Billy Barr, a hermit who spent more than four decades here. Since 1974, Billy has been carrying out daily research in Gothic, measuring avalanches, snow, and water. He was motivated by two things, his obsession with nature and his dislike for people. After living his whole life in the vibrant New Jersey, Billy, as a student, found himself in an abandoned city and fell in love with it forever. Billy lives alone in the settlement. His communication with people is limited to occasional skiing trips to the nearest village, as well as meetings with scientists coming to Gothic. When he's not reconnecting with nature, he likes to spend his time next to a fireplace, reading a book or watching his widescreen TV with a cup of tea. And data on climate change, animal migration and temperature, which Billy has been scrupulously collecting collecting for many years is used by many scientists in research and papers. Charlie Gilmore in today's world, not only a cat or a dog can become a pet. Some people live side by side with miniature pigs, wolf dogs and even tigers. Come on. Come on, mama. <laughs> And this guy from London, Charlie Gilmore, has given refuge to a magpie. She was picked up on the street by Charlie's father, none other than the legendary Pink Floyd guitarist David Gilmore. Since then, the bird settled in the house of the guy and his wife Janina, and it looks like she's staying there for at least a couple of decades. Benzine. 
Charlie, who works as a journalist, seems to be sharing his whole life with the bird, even when he goes to the shower. According to him, benzene has completely changed his view of the world and made him look at birds differently, including crows, which are of the same family, which people often associate with death and scavenging. In fact, these birds are easy to contact and not as scary as they seem, states Charlie. In order to popularize this idea, he even opened a bird cafe in London, where visitors can talk to the crows under the supervision of bird experts. Psst, dude, are you looking for new technologies and great gadgets? Are your thoughts focused on the future? Do you love huge vehicles and can't imagine your life without robots around you? Then visit TechZone and you'll find all this and more. The link is in the description. You interested? Great.